rev video to Alright, we're live on Facebook. Eric. And we are live on both. Sweet. Up. Gotta give everyone a couple minutes to get in here, and there is a delay. Let's do it. Jeff's here. Hey, See that? You wanna quiet down your audio there, Bo? Delay. Yeah. <laughs> that delay in case Tim starts swearing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> quick, quick, mute it. <laughs> Tyler Vogt. Colin that Morris. Interesting. Colin Morris is there. I recognize that name. Mm -hmm. Is he usually in here? Uh, yeah, no, no. He's got a 40th edition Grand Prix with a Z7 kit and an ST5 cam. Been here for Dino Days. Burgundy one? Yeah. Burgundy. 40. Yeah. Let us know if you can hear us okay, and we will get started. It sounds like they can, because nobody's complaining. <laughs> well, anyways, we're uh, talking about Grand Prix today. So hundreds today. Oh, 3800s. Yes. I know there's some of the, the lesser guys that get a little upset when they're not included in the 3800s. Yeah, you got to have some love for the Bonnevilles and the Firebirds and Camaros. And <laughs> well, what about the pre-gen? The Let's not talk about those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyways, uh, I guess we'll start around the room. Uh, basically, we're talking about Grand Prix 3800s. Uh, why people mod them, why they still mod them, and pretty broad topic, so let's go around the rune. I turned him up a little bit. Um, you know, I, I guess I'll start it off. I mean, yeah. the Grand Prix is a pretty amazing car. I mean, think about the horsepower the car has, the gas mileage the car gets, the cost, and the, the cost of the vehicle, and, you know... I First don't know, of all, did uh, I mention gas mileage? Like gas mileage, horsepower, like drivability, comfort. I mean, reliability. It's still, it's still a very valid car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who who are you? What do you do here? Brief right. introduction. I'm, I'm Tim <laughs> Turbo Tim from ZZ Performance. <laughs> we got a uh, Eric behind the camera as usual. You only me, Trevor, to my left, and we got Matt here. Yep. Rare occurrence on the podcast. What do you do here? Um, engineering, racing, tuning. Or depending on the right person you talk to online, nothing. Yeah. Just nothing. Has <laughs> <Nothing. laughs> that uh, been going around lately? Well, of course. You know, everybody's like, oh, they're hiring more people. You guys aren't working. I just wash my race car every day. That's it. <laughs> I just wish wash you did that. <laughs> just out there buffing the whole day. Yeah. yeah. Building a 3800 Camaro Turbo with ST5 cam. Can't wait to get it finished. Sounds we can't good. either. Yeah, you choice. know what? One crazy thing is that there's a ton of those right now. Like, I have, like, four pending tunes with Turbo, Camaros, and Firebirds right now. Mm -hmm. So, they're, they're, those guys aren't as quick to responding with scans as, as the other cars. Oh, really? But, yeah, I've got a bunch of them right now. So, I, I kind of regret, like, we had a 3800 Firebird Turbo Kit, and we designed it. It was nice. And then I think the guys forgot how to make it, and then we just dropped it. <laughs> And then now I bet you'd probably sell like crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's just a cheap eBay one that they offer, and a lot of people have to modify the heck out of it. Typical. It's like yeah. all fab work and everything has to be redone. Basically get the manifolds out of it. Yeah. <clears throat> yep, I just turned him up a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> We're in extremes today. Drew Smith. My Impala is better than my 3800. That was like one of the worst experiences driving of my life. Driving Drew's four-cylinder Impala. Like a newer one? Yeah. Like, I don't know, it's like a, a teens plus. And mm -hmm. I've, he was in his supercharged vet that ran like mid-nines. And I'm following him in his Impala. He punches it. I was floored for like a mile to get up to the speed limit in that car. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Terrible. Sorry about my audio. I turned yeah, it down. So how about we uh, talk about how everybody got into a 3800? Yeah, yeah. let's uh, start it out here. We got two of the OGs in the 38 market. We got Matt and Tim here who beginning as easy P 3800s, and then Bo kind of a new blood 3800 owner. So I guess... Uh, I think that's a Matt story. Yeah, Matt that, first. But Matt was touch 3800s for me. Well, was the it was Zoom. Black car, your first car even? Your first 3800? Um, yeah. Yeah, well, Zoom uh, leased a 99 right when it came out. 
and I drove that when it was brand new, and it was it was pretty amazing, especially, <laughs> especially at that time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a really nice car, and uh, he started modding it, and yeah, then I picked up my uh, GT because we wanted to go that route too, and uh, six thousand dollars for a '97, <laughs> but. So you got it when it was like five-ish years old or something like that, probably? Or older Three. than that? Oh, really? Wow. Old. Wow. That's a good deal. Yeah, because that was before his EZP started. Right. Did so they just plummet in value that fast, or did you find a crazy good deal somewhere? Oh, it was a bare model cloth interior oh. GT. 100000 on it. It's, it's about right. Mm-hmm. So I just had to go to Ohio to get it, or Indiana or something. But Did you daily it for a while then, before it was full race car? Um, yeah, what was your first mod? Centrifugal kit. <laughs> it was the first thing that we did when we bought it. Probably one of the first um, boosted GTs, aside from M90, I would imagine. There was one guy with a turbo, but nobody really knew much about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we put the centrifugal kit on it, some drag radials, no intercooler, stock motor. I think it threw a VS cam in it, and it was already going 12.3, like right which is, off the bat. Which, which is an impressive number which to this week, day. a week earlier would have been faster than any GTP, except Zoom had just gone faster than that. <laughs> but he had ported heads and yeah, engine, you know, apart. all kinds of stuff done to his. So it was the fastest stock engine right off the bat. Yep. <laughs> and he was running slicks. So, I mean, it was basically an afternoon of mods and go run 12.3 with no intercooler. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Do you yeah. remember what power that was at? Do you we know? didn't dyno very didn't, much back yeah, then. Yeah, we didn't have we didn't have a dyno. Access so. to one to just throw things. We on. didn't even have a building. So that it's just time, so. whatever your strip time was, that was. <laughs> yeah, pretty much our drive to Detroit to get on a dyno. Wow. Because we had to go to Detroit for tuning. Really? We didn't, there was no tuners. Just drove the car all the way over there. Yeah. Uh, Rented a dyno or something. Yeah, digital horsepower. Hmm. Dave probably right. Yep. Dave Buckshaw. Yep. Back then, yeah, we've all, all three of us have made the, all four of us at the time have made the trip out up to Dave Buckshaw's house and yep. hung out with him and the family, and we'd go tune the cars and wow. drive back home. <laughs> yep. Did you ever have any uh, anything go wrong on the dyno and have to tow anything home? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think Zoom's car might have broke on the dyno way back in the day once. House's but... car, bust a flywheel. Just making 400 non intercooled though. We were pushing it hard. <laughs> See, that's the crazy thing is it seems like you guys made a lot more horsepower than the guys do now. Well, and a lot of that may, become, may just be because the cars were so new and the parts weren't worn yet. I don't know. But like 400 on no intercooler these days, people can't even make 400 with an intercooler. It was aluminum heads. Yeah. It was a lot, it was a lot of mods. I mean, it was everything we could throw at it yeah. to get there. Yeah. So we got one guy in here. He's asking about the HP3 insert. Um, we're working on it this yeah, summer, like hopefully. Eight. They'll be back in stock. HP3s? Is he asking about? Mm-hmm. What do you want to know? I think we have an ETA in that. Yet. Yeah, I was just, just talking to Tim Cooling about it the other day, and he said hopefully by this summer. Oh, perfect. This summer. There you go. I think you could 3D print those? Yeah, should yeah. hold up. <laughs> so I guess I'll talk, while Tim's out right now, I'll, I'll talk about how I got into the 3D yeah. printers, and that was just basically just being in uh, high school and wanting a first car and seeing everybody running around with the Grand Prix, and it seemed like the cool thing to do at the time. So was it your first car? It was not my first car. First car was a 93 Geo Tracker. <laughs> 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 and I... Uh, and drove that for a year or two and then took out a loan on my, my red car. And that, oh, was, really? that was the first car I ever bought was my 01 special edition. Wow. I wanted a special edition and I wanted a two door and it had to be red. So came across that on Marketplace one day and scooped it up, <laughs> drove it for a little bit and chipped the piston like everybody does. <laughs> you know, too small of a pulley, not knowing what you're doing at the time. And then that just <laughs> snowballed from there. You want to give all the viewers a, a quick rundown on how to mod a Grand Prix? Yeah, how start to... with the pulley, right? No, <laughs> pulleys are gonna be the last thing. I'm gonna do. The first thing you're gonna do is get some exhaust flowing out of it, get a good fuel in it, mm-hmm. and then uh, go from there. What was that car's first setup? Even it was a blower car still. Yeah, it was the... just one nine rackers and uh, Gen five. Yeah. yeah. After that, XP cam and uh, full. Blower. 
Then you basically just cleaned that car up for a while, rocked it, and then you got the Regal? Yep. After that? Oh, I drove that. I, I had that just till uh, about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, had a couple other W bodies in between, but... Never modded them? Oh, yeah. They're all modded. Uh, the My first Regal was a 3.4. 3.4 car, power logs, and uh, just 1.0 tune that Tim did. And E85, that was a daily. Put 20,000 miles on that until I accidentally... And some lady pulled out in front of me, and I smashed it. <laughs> Tahoe pulled out in front of me in the winter. Were the parts still good, or...? Um, yeah, it was, uh, parts were still good. It just needed a front core support, pulled a little bit and a bumper, but, uh, a good friend of mine bought it and fixed it up and he's still rocking it or sold it. I can't even remember. Hmm. Yep. I haven't seen it since though. You know the Regal. Um, yeah. And then this Regal came along last right year now? after I was all out of W bodies. I was, I was, I was out of the 3,800 scene completely for about three months and I was just itching and itching. And a good friend in Wisconsin posted this for the car for sale. And I was like, oh, all right, I'll get another Regal. <laughs> and then the rest is history. And I'm actually really glad I got that car because if I didn't get that car, I probably won't have my job here. I was, I was, I had a Chevy pickup and I was bound and determined to go and LS. The rest is history. Just, and I'm actually really glad I got that, that car because if I didn't get that car, that, I probably won't have my job here. You know, that 3800. I was, I had it got me still. So Why not 3800 in a dude truck? Maybe we're working on it. I got maybe one day. S <laughs> ten. I always kind of thought about doing that as well. I yeah, I like the old S ten extremes. Yeah, I'd really like a thirty eight hundred four wheel drive S ten with a thirty eight hundred would be cool. Steve was talking about that for his Jeep the other day. I yeah. don't know why, but he was. <laughs> yeah, they're cheap. Make good power. Available mods. I mean, you can if you look on marketplace these days, you can get a good long block for two three hundred bucks. I mean the car the the engine that I had in my red car last was a was a 95,000 mile L36 that I picked up for $200. The guy pulled it out in his yard and uh, <laughs> I bought it. Just trusted that it was a 1000 mile L36 that I picked up for $200. The guy pulled it out in his yard and I bought it. Dino days and was a good reliable engine. You don't always need to build an extravagant bottom end for these cars. Definitely not. Yeah. I mean, your car is what's still... In, what's in your car? <laughs> well, my fastest time was on a stock bottom end. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, there's, and there's guys in Australia that have gone sevens on them. Yeah. It's I hard, mean, and the only believe. reason that Matt's engine is not 100% stock junkyard bottom end is because he had a nitrous mishap and melted a hole through the block. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so he was like, well, I'm in there. I might as well put forged pistons. So, yeah. sure. you know, now it does, but... We needed to test our, our yeah. forged setup, so yeah, it's like it's a good to get car to test it in for sure. So Matt, did you did you have more after the black one, or did you strictly build the black one into? I had a red one. Car? I had a red one that was just light mods, test a couple parts, daily driver, um, and a Monte Carlo. Mm -hmm. Did well, you like the Monte Carlo or no? Yeah, it was a nice car. Yeah, we got that one a year old. Yeah, I, my lightly modded Regal before the one I have now, I really enjoyed just the 3-4 pulley, full bolt-ons, and E85. Like, that was such a good daily. Yeah. You know, like, just fun, not going to hurt anything, reliable. You know, do the intake gaskets. and JPL is a big fan of yours. Yeah. I don't know if you got your coilovers yet, but we're excited to see you. You did get them. Rocking those. You get them in yet? Let us know when you do. We want to know how those go. Um, Matt's Monte Carlo actually ran, what was your best time in that car? 11.2. Yeah. That's super fast. Yeah. Centrifugal. Oh, really? You know, that was another centrifugal car. You know, high stall converter, typical yeah. ZZP had, trans. Had the bigger blower on it. it like a low one five sixty foot. Mm -hmm. Ripped off 11.2, racing a, a Mustang. Just barely got him. <laughs> That's a pretty good race. Was that like a... Uh, Terminator Mustang, that era? Like a 90. Oh, like Fox Body something? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were out at Milan that day. You were there too, and it was uh, the magic weather day. Yeah. 30.6 <laughs> barometer, 40 degrees, negative 2,000 DA. <laughs> Bad day for dino guys, but good day for track Great guys. day for the track. Track was sticking. Is that how that goes? Is it worse yeah. on the dyno when it's hotter? Well, the dyno corrects your time. 
your, oh. your horsepower. But at the track, if you get a 30.6 day, like, you're running times. <laughs> yeah. Like, today, we were we dynoed a customer Sonic, and it was 30.3, and I'm like, oh, wow, that's that's up there. The correction factor was 92. So, mm-hmm. taking 8% of what he made. Mm-hmm. So, Tim, your first yeah. car. Under, under the cars. Why we call you Turbo Tim. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, pretty sure I told the story before on here, but um, Zoom was like, hey, I need... I need you in a Grand Prix. You're a big car mod guy. Um, you're going to be a better employee having a 3,800 car. Yeah. And um, he was like, what do I got to do to get you in one? And he, you know, basically gave me a raise enough to pay for the car. So I went out. I actually got the nicest, lowest mileage car that we had um, in, like, while we were heavily modifying. Because I guess Zoom's lease car was brand new. Um, but yeah, mine was like 60,000 miles, Burgundy GT, super clean. And then, uh, Matt came to me and he was like, Hey, you're, you turbo, you're turbo guy. Can I build a turbo kit for this thing? <laughs> and I was like, yup. <laughs> so that's where the turbo, you know, turbo Tim came from. And what that was car, the first turbo you put on it? Uh, it was like a 60 dash one old T3 t3 turbo i believe the first one was yeah, cheap turbo <laughs> effective mm-hmm. we matt made the turbo kit and we didn't have enough wastegate on it and i wasn't paying enough attention and it boost crept down the entrance ramp and i ended up chipping a piston and this is where the funny story gets around at the shop of uh i like swapped my piston in like in like overnight and then we went to the dyno the next day and it made 417 wheel like it was, I think it was the highest horsepower yeah. 3800. Two, two dyno pulls in to a brand new bolt build, and it was the highest power two 3800 holes. that there was. It was the On whole stock cam. Mm-hmm. The whole build was like three days old or something, right? Yeah. It, yeah. it was like, it was Just like a day in. I chipped a piston because I, it, that was all my fault. That was before wide bands were affordable. Yeah. So I just get on the entrance ramp and just floor it, you know, not scanning because we, relied on dhp back then so we didn't scan it ourselves really Mm -hmm. and then uh yeah swapped that piston in the in the shop like i think i had your old piston from your gt that had like one hundred and eighty thousand miles on it and matt's like here here's this Mm -hmm. we just kind of like reused the rings from my piston on his piston and (laughs) reused my rod and just threw it in there just one bank one cylinder swap didn't even hone it and uh, yeah, made, made 417, and then I went to the track and ran, um, I think like, man, you remember like 11? I know it was high 11s right away on street tires. Yeah, because I went to the track and I was like, I think I'm going to run 11s, and everybody was like, nah, nah. And I ran 1196 at like 119. I think on oh, wow. Toyo Proxy two twenty five forty eighteens. Nice. And that that was a good day. Like <laughs> Yeah, that just really shows how efficient the turbo is over the blower. Like you yeah, said, yeah. stock cam and it was the highest horsepower mm-hmm. thirty eight hundred to date just by uh, Zoom had cracked four hundred barely after months and months and months yeah. of throwing everything did. at it and Tim just goes in there, makes like three sixty, do another pull, four seventeen. Just like so that, that was, was the that was easy. Like, everything serve over mirror, pretty much. <laughs> if you want to make big power, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah blowers are fun, but you're giving up, you know, forty to sixty horsepower just spinning. to spin in that darn blower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not a lot, not not to mention the heat that comes with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's uh, tur- turbo sound better too. Well, I mean, kind of depends. <laughs> we'll we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Hopefully somebody's working on a video we might be able to release today for you guys to slip in this uh, in the middle of this podcast. Yeah, thirty eight hundreds aren't sounding the same around here. Yeah, just whenever you can. Yes. Can we play this? Yeah, exactly. Tyler did it. Tyler pulled uh, it off. They all sound turbo now. <laughs> so basically, uh, this is going to be a sneak peek, uh, like a sound clip of the exhaust project we're working on to give you guys a little backstory on the car. It's a 05 Grand Prix GT that we just threw stuff that's been sitting in the corners collecting dust on. 
you know, it's a RPM XP cam. Yeah, that's what yeah. started it. We wanted us to run our X, XP in a car around yep. here. And then stage two intercooler, um, you know, super, we supercharged it. Um, and this car has um, our standard power logs front and rear and our standard off the shelf non resonated cat back on it. Um, we did think that it was a little loud with without a resonator, but uh, the the sound Certainly is amazing. bearable for sure. Yeah, like the the thunder drone is gone, so it's just loud when cruising now. Yes. But you can't complain if it's good loud. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is a good loud. Yeah. And the best part is, is all of the parts are, you know, I mean, we go ahead and just. Give yeah. the people the yeah, clip. Just play. <laughs> Look, you guys may or may not hear it. I'm not sure, so just stand by. We're, we're going to try. Here. Go ahead and just give yeah. the people the yeah, clip. Yeah, just play. <laughs> Look, you guys may or may not hear it. I'm not sure. Let us so know. Just just stand by. Let us we're we're going to try. Here. Look, go ahead and just give yeah. the people yeah, the yeah, clip. Yeah, just play. <laughs> Look, you guys may or may not hear it. I'm not sure. Let us know. So just stand by. Let us we're we're going to try. Here. Look, Go ahead and just give yeah. the people the yeah, clip. Yeah, just play. <laughs> like, you guys may or may not hear it. I'm not sure. Let us know. So just let us we're we're going to try. Here. Go ahead and just give yeah. the people yeah, the clip. Yeah, just play. <laughs> like, you guys may or may yeah. not hear it. I'm not sure. Let us know. Yeah, so we'll let us, we're we're going to try. Oh, we'll wait for the Go ahead and just give yeah. the people the yeah, clip. Yeah, just play. <laughs> like, you guys. Oh, did I just hear it? I thought I did. Yeah. Well, either way, it sounds magical. We got a thumbs up. Yeah. You guys will hear more videos of it soon. Yeah. Um, and it'll work with your stock cat back even. Like if you have yeah. a stock cat back, it'll it'll work with that. If you any cat back you have, it'll work with that. It's basically just a new downpipe that is going to completely change how how uh, the 3800 sounds completely. For sure. It, it, it's cool because it's kind of rather simple, really. Super simple. Mm -hmm. It's going to be something that... Bolt in. Yeah. And it, still maintain your ground clearance. Not going to be really all that expensive either, right? No. Shouldn't be? No, it shouldn't be no. very expensive. <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> they didn't hear it. He says, we just heard your voices again on loop. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's all good. We'll we can play. at least put the video on YouTube at least, and you guys can hear it, and then we'll release a better video here soon. Can we play it on the phone next I got to the it. speaker? Just I got see it. Just see if they can hear it. Yeah. Slightly. Hmm. This is gonna be so bad. But yeah, while he's pulling that up, uh, you obviously had hundreds more, thirty eight hundreds, right? Oh man, I've had a, I've had a lot of thirty eight hundreds. Or was that the end of the first one? Did you just rock it at that power and? Yeah, that was yeah, it? I I ended up uh, I ran it for a few years and uh, you sold it. The turbo ever? Or? Yeah, okay. we we swapped some exhaust housings, you know, just dialing in the turbo kit. Um, I ended up selling the car and then that guy sent it back and then we ended up revising the turbo kit and giving it back to him with another like 60 or 70 wheel horsepower. And, and, um, that guy, I guess is like one of those big, uh, street racers for money. Oh, really? You know? Yeah. So he just, he just, you know, would That's show cool. up to the spot and race for a few hundred bucks or whatever. And that car, like, like I said, I mean, on the Toyo proxies, it ran 11, nine, like at the drag strip, just. I mean, just playing with your foot. So yeah, for a street so. car, that's perfect. I love yeah. I love street racing a thirty eight hundred, but you either get the guys who are too cool for you, or you get the guys who know it. It's gonna be fast. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that you know, they definitely don't... became an issue around Grand Rapids. Yeah, I couldn't race anybody in any car. Uh huh. It's like, well, I know, I know what that is. That's a ZZP car. It's my red bone stock one you know yeah or like a power log on a gt <laughs> i'm not racing that i know about zzp yeah <laughs> they're either too cool to get beat by 38 or just don't even bother all right i got it right here we'll see if you guys can hear something the video does not do it uh, justice, but <laughs> we'll just yeah, it's all good. We'll, we'll have a video soon. We're working on it, so. <laughs> but like I mentioned in a previous podcast, uh, moving forward with 3800 progression for ZZ performance, like there's not an area of the W body that we're not working on. You know, yeah. as far as valve train, exhaust, suspension, um, it's 
it's definitely still always at the top of our list for progressing in some way or another. Yeah, yeah we're, we're not like the other vendors. I mean, we, we're still producing new and better products for, for the platform. Um, I, don't, I don't know why other vendors do it, but other vendors just drop products. And uh, that's not really our way. And I think that's why we succeed as well as we do is that we don't forget about everybody. I mean, we're not dropping products. Um, I noticed somebody mentioned uh, HV3. We really are working on the HV3. Mm -hmm. But um, since we're bringing production 100% in-house, we had a, a shop that was like a couple doors down from us making the HV3 before. And now we are actually producing it 100% in-house. So like we had to that completely do the design on the product. And obviously when we redesign a new product, it has to be better than the last one because, you know, not being as good as the last one is unacceptable. So um, we should have something shortly. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a big seller for us and something we haven't forgotten about. Yeah. There's an easy question. Uh, thoughts on twin charging W bodies? Why? It's a 3.8 liter. You could put a big turbo on it and it makes good power. Why would you put a blower on it and slow it down? We did it on Zoom's car. Yeah. You know, and then we pulled the blower off and the only reason they make I would do power. it is just because, you know, the the ease of not swapping the intake manifold, but that's not that hard to do. It does work, but you're throwing in a lot of complication for yeah. maybe no reason. Simplicity yeah. is always key. I don't remember I don't remember. Did we have a problem with blowing the bypass field seals out on a thirty eight hundred? We had the I don't think so. That was a cobalt problem? Yeah, probably. But they're running more boost. Because mm -hmm. that video of Zoom's GTP versus that diesel truck, <laughs> um, that video I believe has a bunch of likes, and that's a pretty fun video. I even watch it every once in a great while because it's it's a neat video. That was his car with a twin charge yeah. kit on it. <laughs> Yeah, what we, uh, we it almost went, didn't get that video. Went, right? Yeah. The tape ran out. It's back when you had to use the tape. The tape, tape ran out. <laughs> Literally was <with> tape. <laughs> and she quick rewound it while he was staging and, and started recording. And it, it ended again like one second after the board lit up, 997. The fastest yep. pass yeah. the car ever made. Yep. Well, I that imagine. was a Gen 3 M90 with a T72. Yep. Right? So Burnout King. No wheelie bar. Still a very streetable car. Mm -hmm. Zoom drove his a while, right? When mm -hmm. he was modding and everything, it was pretty much his daily for a long time. Yeah. My yep. understanding. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Like, <laughs> pull it in, do a bunch of stuff, drive it home, and oh yeah, test it out. Yeah. So uh, the uh, the coilovers are available now. Those are really cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What else do we got new? What's really great about the coilovers is like. We had a guy who was in Michigan, and he ordered them, and he received them, like, the next day. And we're at BC. You're literally three to three weeks to more out. And if BC ever shuts down or takes a break or yeah. does whatever they do. Right in-house, we can ship them out hands. the same day, you know, depending on how early your order gets in. And uh, they're, they perform well, and uh, they're red, so they got to be cool. <laughs> they are red. <laughs> <laughs> Someone it's, want to comment on that L26? Yeah, turbo build? I was going to say. Uh, L32 versus L30 or 26 for a turbo build. Yeah, it's L32 hands down. That L26 rod, that powdered rod, is way too weak. Mm -hmm. um, nice with a supercharger, light, but... it might be okay. You know, if you make maybe 350 wheel or something, but uh, if you make 400 wheel, that, that L26 rod is going to be in two pieces. Yeah, they handle. <laughs> Plus, you got a little bit lower Running compression. the L32. Running 12s at best, where the L32 is what we ran to the 8s. Yeah. That's, it's not even that's comparable. That's a pretty big difference. Now, um, L36, when you, that's when fine. When you put it like that, it, re it really... Uh... Yeah. L36 is fine. That's NA. That's just uh, that's yeah. 2004 and older, because mm -hmm. 2004 Grand Prix have an L36 in them still. Hmm. L26 is actually 2006 and up, or 2005 and up. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, an L36 is fine. Yeah, great mm -hmm. engine. That works great. Yeah, you got the uh, the little bit of uh, extra compression, too, which is great for a blower. I see uh, JPL. I, I talk to that guy almost daily through email. Mm -hmm. um, we I am planning on a power log header project in the near future. 
Yeah. Um, probably an e- like the goal is to make an equal length shorty header for the 3800 that's affordable. So that is in our in our future. I wouldn't say near future, but yes. in the future. Does the HP3 make more horsepower? Yeah, the HP3 is a... Well, Tim always explains this well. It's up top. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's You kind of have to draw it out, but the new one is probably not going to make more power than the old one. It'll just be nicer, install better. Uh, it only makes like nine more horsepower at 5,600, which is the stock peak RPM horsepower. But what's cool, instead of the power just falling off to nothing with the stock inserts in... The HV3 kind of lets it carry out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's only maybe 9 horsepower at 5,600, but it's like 20 horsepower at Mm 6,000. And with a 3,800 having such a wide gear ratio between each gear, you really, really, it's very beneficial to rev that car out another two, three, you know, maybe four, you know, 400 RPM more because your average power at full throttle is higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and speaking of revving out, we got some cool retainers coming too that we're testing out yes. with that RPM cam. Yes, the titanium retainers didn't really work out. They don't longevity; they wear out, and the lock starts to pull through the thing. So that's why we dropped them like two, two, three, four years ago. Mm-hmm. But uh, we have a new lightweight steel retainer coming out, and that is. I wish I had weight numbers on it, but it's significantly I think, lighter. I think I it's it's. It's titanium weight with steel cost. Cool. Yeah. And it's like you mentioned the longevity. Everybody builds a 3,800 to put miles on them normally. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be a real key. So if you put 30,000 miles on your XP cam build and you got a lightweight retainer in there, you're not going to have to worry about it pulling through. Yep. You know, you don't really build a 3,800 to refresh it every year. No. Not... <laughs> no. <laughs> No, uh, and, and lightweight valve train is key with the 3800 because, you know, like I mentioned before, you can't run enough valve spring in a 3800. Mm-hmm. Uh, the spring pocket's too small. Um, the rocker b- bolt is too small. So, I mean, every, every ounce you can remove from your moving valve train is, is huge mm-hmm. because every 3800 is rev limited by valve train weight, which yeah. is, it ends up in valve float. So if you lighten the rocker, you you know, with our ZZP rockers, if you lighten the retainer, um, you can rev the car out more. And that's where more power is. Because the 3800, it's not like it wants to shut down at 5600. No, it's just that's where they start to do weird harmonic handicapped. valve spring, valve float things. Mm-hmm. Chris uh, Mercedante says, no way, Matt, to put together my kit. I don't know if you recognize the name. But of course. He also says, There's a big uh, name in that. Market. Don't forget to mention Zoom shopping cart, Wayne. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Zoom's car was such a ricer when he first had it. <laughs> yeah, Chris uh, actually let us borrow his slicks to run Kalo's car down at Pink's because he showed up for the race and didn't have any slicks. <laughs> so Chris bailed us out and Swap. gave us some slicks to run for the weekend. That's cool. Yeah, That is cool. It's an expendable item there. I mean, that's a lot of money per pass. Yeah. So if he just donated them without getting paid, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> we all wish we had that friend at the track to just yeah. lend us out tires. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> this guy says, why drive a 3800 easy? You only have 300 in your bank account. <laughs> <laughs> you can probably almost get a running and drive a 3800 for $300 these days. I'm sure it's it might not done. look good, but it'll be 3800 <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> those rockers will be in a U shape because there's no metal behind them anymore. Yeah. But <laughs> I just seen a Regal at the gas station today, and it's just like, there's not scared. a lot of clean ones up here anymore in Michigan. But you know, back to the 3800. Like, think think about this. I remember there were there were customers that had cars that ran 11s and got 30 miles to the gallon. You know. You know me, I just bought a Sonic. I love Sonics, but you're not running 11s in a Sonic nope. and getting 30 miles of the gallon still. I'm sorry, it's just not going to happen. But you can do that with your your GTP, your SSCI, your GS, GSX. You know, you can do that. Mm-hmm. But um, you you can do it with an NA car with a turbo kit on it still. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a lot of engine. I think that's always been my most favorite part about 3800 is how versatile it is. 
and how readily available parts are and how easy it is to work on. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to do any complete any you know absolutely any repair on a 3800 it's super easy i mean a water pump you can do in probably 20 minutes if you got a standard socket set in your garage yep i couldn't agree more yeah I it's mean, a very easy engine to work on a great car to be like to learn how to work on a car yeah that's that's really what what i always enjoyed about it going through college you know driving having to drive to college every day having a regal that, that was reliable and if something did go wrong i can just Go to the local parts store. They got parts, or ZZP's got parts. You know, so it was just it was convenient to have something that I could count on. And if I did need to wrench on it at night when I got home, it wasn't a big deal. You think you're gonna take yours to Tail of the Dragon this year too? I'd really like to. Yeah, I'd really like to. That of the Ion, right? If I can keep that transmission cool, it's got a good 40k cooler on it now, but uh, maybe add a fan to it. I don't know. Let's get a race hood and vent the hood, and then problem solved. We don't need a race hood to vent the hood. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, it actually got a couple real bad stone chips from a dang semi I was following in the fall anyway, so I got no All problem worry. poking a hole in it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and it doesn't have performance shift, but I know you can add it. And I was thinking if we added performance shift, I could have a separate shift table that would keep me in the right gear during the tail. This is old memory, but pin 21 comes to mind. That's what I'm saying. Hopefully somebody will jump in here. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. I think you ground pin 21 and there's performance shift. Obviously, you have to enable it with the power tuner, but. Yeah, he's right. Pin 21. All right, I'll look at this. Seems like a memory. Yeah. (laughs) Either way, look it up on Identifix. Yeah, one wire. And, uh, and you Firebird guys, um, your second gear start, your second gear start in the PCM is a performance, performance shift, shift table. Yeah. So, like, I do it all the time for the F-body guys. I'll, I'll make, because uh, who the hell wants second gear start? Like, I don't, mm-hmm. maybe if you're totally winter beatering it, and I still wouldn't do it if I had it. Um, yeah, I always the car to winter drive. <laughs> yeah, a terrible car. Firebird. <laughs> so I just take the normal shift tables, and I... 1.0 them let's say you know performance them and then i take that and i copy and paste it into the performance shift tables the second gear start and then i just add like let's say 10 percent, and then just kind of make the full throttle the same so like when you click the second gear start it just is that much more aggressive sportier that's basically what i would do for yours mm-hmm. is just make it to where it hangs the gear longer yeah. and it may be like downshifts even on a let up so if the car drops below, you know, 25 miles an hour or whatever, it automatically upshifts to the next, or downshifts to the next gear. Yeah. So it's ready to go. Something we'll certainly play with. Yeah. yeah. To make sure that the transmission's happy during the, the beating it's going to be taken. <laughs> JPL says, uh, still waiting if uh, Intense can use his heads. <laughs> He sent his thirty eight hundred, his thirty eight hundred um, core heads to intense in ZZP boxes. Oh, yeah, I saw the YouTube video. Because we, we, right now, currently, we don't sell good ported heads. Mm-hmm. Because I, I mean, that's kind of on me. I just couldn't find head cores. You can't find thirty eight hundred head cores, and for us to do a CNC head, I mean, I need to have like twenty head cores. Right. And I just yeah. can't find twenty head cores anymore. So it's like, ah. Uh, but um, we, we do have a few aluminum heads that we'll be releasing, you know, probably, let's say, in a month. Yeah. I think we have two sets of each, if I recall. So we'll have, like, four And that's pair. it, right? That's, that's it. Forever? That's it. That's your last chance, so. Yeah, loop 35 we'll aluminum pennies. heads. <laughs> yes. uh, Terrell says, uh, uh, where did he say that? Tim got all my 3800 builds running good. He also said the only thing that's hard to work on is cylinder six spark plug. Oh man, yeah. It doesn't bother me. It's not oh bad. come on! Once you get used to it. She's the stock the right manifold tool. cylinder six. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're doing something. Once you get wrong. used to it. <laughs> I mean, uh, if you pull the dog bone, it, you know, you pull the dog bone bolt, and then you rock the car, and you have somebody hit the parking brake. You know that that helps. Uh, but. Of course, me. I'm too impatient. Yeah. Like, everything's hot, and I'm like, ah, burning myself. Ah, I can't give this thing 15 minutes. Let's just get this done. Change your plugs in the morning, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's my own fault. Yeah. Oh. 
Justin's got a turbo car getting 21 MPG at 422 wheel. See, that sounds pretty fun. Oh, it can do better than that. <laughs> he, tell him to look into uh, his converter. Make sure his converter's locking up on at cruising speed. Yeah, that's a really big thing, it seems like. I, people... The converter not locking is four miles per gallon gone. Mm-hmm. And overheating their transmission. Also. That too, for sure. So, you know, the, the easy test for, for those that don't know, and everybody should do this test on their 3800, is um, cruise down the highway at, like, let's say, you know, highway speed, and just while your foot is on the gas pedal holding a steady, ga- or holding a steady speed, just take your, your other foot and just touch the brake pedal. Just touch it. Just enough to light the brake lights, but not slow the car down. Yep. When you do that, you should see the RPM bump like two to 400 RPM. If that bumps up and then slowly pulls back down, that means your converter's working. Mm -hmm. If it does not do that, that means you either have a code running in the background, um, the, the... OSID of the PCM file is not right for the car. Your converter clutches are worn out. You know. Yeah, because what you're doing when you tap the brake is you, you, uh, it it releases the converter because it yes. sees that. It's like a PCM command if it yeah. gets a brake light. Yeah, because yeah, the the torque converter as as clutch the is, is like a switch. manual tranny clutch. I mean, if it's if the torque converter is not slipping, the car will stall when you're sitting at yep. a traffic light. Well, when you accelerate from that traffic light and you hold and maintain a speed, that converter clutch rolls in there, gets rid of all the slippage of the converter, and then holds a steady speed. And that has the lightest load on the engine at that point. And if you're just sitting there slipping like two, three hundred, you know, four miles per gallon gone. Easily. Oh, Al's in here. I got, I got some dirt on Al. He wants to fight, but... Just the other day, he was talking about a uh, Trans Am rear drive, 3800 he wanted. So, <laughs> calling you out, Al. <laughs> he wanted one. <laughs> Al and I both. I just emailed it. One of the guys today, I just emailed him. I'm like, ah. He emailed me some F-body questions. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, the one, the one car that I've always wanted that I haven't owned yet. You know, I was just thinking the other day. I was like, man, I would like a rear-wheel drive 3800. And I'm like, what are my options? Oh, just a Firebird. Literally yeah. one, or a Camaro. There's only one. How is, is that, that the Catfish Camaro? Is that what they call them? Yeah, it's just, eh, I guess with that, no, it's uh, not. They probably have the non-Cat Eye one, too. They probably have the old, the old one, probably, is the first year. The, the, yeah, I'm not You have the 98 Camaros, body style change, and then you have the 97, and then that 3800 is in the 95 and 6, right? <laughs> 96, I think. 96 at bare minimum. Maybe a 95, maybe a 3,400. What manual transmission that. are those with? That's the uh, 4L60. Mm. So, still electronic. Mm-hmm. Um, not like the 97 front wheel drivers are not electronic, unless you're supercharged. You say manual, I think it's a T5. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or the T5 if you're a manual tranny guy. Yeah. But both good options, both a lot of fun. Rear axles are a little weak, <laughs> but big deal. They've got big axles. <laughs> oh, the Cobalt L and F L S J guys are in here. <laughs> Thirty eight hundred changed my mind. I I I've been saying all all day because everybody's been ragging on the podcast topic. If it ain't got push rods, it ain't a hot rod. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of people that agree with you in the chat. Uh, JPL twenty five hundred or three thousand, definitely three thousand. All the converter. <laughs> all the converter. All the time. Um, that's another thing. I'm glad that he brought that up. Yeah. We're actually releasing, I think, a ZZP 3500 stall. Ooh. Um, Big boy. And I, I can't honestly ever say there's a time where you wouldn't want all the converter. I Fair. mean, the converter's got a lockup clutch in it, so if you're cruising, it's going to lock up. So there's pretty really much no 3500 negative. stall all the time. Put it in everything. <laughs> yeah. I, I drove that uh, silver car the other day, and it definitely felt good with that 3500 yeah. in it. Yeah. So is that uh, the summer thing as well? Yeah. Possibly? Yeah, that cool. should be. Uh, we, just, we just need some drive time on the converter to make sure everything's cool. But, yeah, it, it's just a part number ready to order. Mm-hmm. And then just we'll testing have that. to make sure that it's all set for our, our, our customers. Yep. Got to put a bunch of miles on it before you drop it on the website. Yeah. 
We just want it for ourselves first. That's all. Um, I did. I actually did the converter testing in my personal Bonneville. I had a Bonneville that was just like basic, basic bolt-ons, and it made 360 wheel. Was that the white one you talk about the color Black one? all the time? I wish. I, I didn't have the beautiful gold pearl Bonneville. Mine was black, but oh. um, I put a uh, a 1200 stall in it, which was the worst decision I ever made in my life. Okay. Like 360 wheel, and you could punch it from a dead stop and not spin a, uh, spin a tire. Really? It would roll out about 40 feet and then light the tires all the way to the shift point. Um, and then we tested our our 2000 stall and then our 2500. And then I had um, a real high stall, which I believe is the 3500 that we're dropping um, here soon. Mm-hmm. But uh, the 3500 was the most fun. I mean, at 40 miles an hour, you floor it, it would just blow, annihilate the tires through first gear and, and then into second gear, like all the way through. It's just way more fun. Yeah. Your differential probably doesn't like it very much, but... Um, but it definitely makes a lot more fun car. Yeah, uh, pay to play. Uh, the 65E likes it much, but just keep it cool. It'll be all right. Yeah. And, and I mean, Matt always, in his centrifugal cars, since uh, centrifugals are a little more high strung, um, he's always had a lot of converter in his. Like, what, 3,800? 4,000. 4,000, yeah. yeah. Oh. Nice. Worked really well. Yeah. That's tall. But you had to because there's no boost down low. So if you had a 2,500 stall in there, it's not going to launch. So how do you launch, like, your drag car? Like, I don't know anything about launching an automatic car. Like, is there something weird to that, or is it just stand on the brakes, stand on the gas, and go? Well, that car has a line lock, so, and there's a a brake pressure gauge. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you take the first second to push the brake as hard as you possibly can, get it up as high as you can, and hit the line lock, so then you can kind of relax. And it just takes time. Big turbo. There's not much you can do. Um, but I use nitrous, so. To help spool the turbo? Yeah. Barely. If you, if He's you, got a baby kit on it. Yeah, but if you have to launch on a timed tree and you're actually racing you against people, you, you can't sit and wait, so you have to use nitrous and then just huh. tailor the shot to whatever gives you the, the 60 foot you're looking for. That's pretty cool. That is super cool. Yeah, gotta... every every car has its specific style. Like on most cars, I would say a light power brake to X RPM, and then a roll a roll into the throttle, mm-hmm. and then you probably don't even get to go full throttle until it shifts into second. Yep. And on our one point oh file, I try to have the part throttle shifts pretty aggressive. So like you roll like. By the time you're at like 60% throttle, it should be shifting at like 6,000, let's say. And then when it hits second gear, then you can pretty much roll into full throttle on most street tire cars. And then um, it shouldn't have that early shift and then downshift back to first like we used to have. Um, But on a car with stickier tires, obviously you'll be able to power brake it a lot higher. You'll be able to roll into the throttle a little quicker. And then on a full slick car, I mean, Matt's like kind of, I believe, the king of like drag launching. I mean, if you want the best 60 foot, I mean, you hand your keys to Matt pretty much. <laughs> but uh, he just has a good ability to power brake the car and feel the tires slipping and have the perfect amount of slip speed. Because you don't want, like, you want a slip speed. Yeah. There needs to be a percentage of slip there. Yeah, El was telling me the other day about 20 ish percent is usually the. I mean, depending, but roughly the yeah. fastest acceleration point. Yeah, yes. It's, it's, it's mostly prep, though. Yeah. You have to know the track and go in with the right setup and then tailor it you slightly. You change everything if it's I also different. pulled the timing out in the drag car on a button. Like, when I lock the line lock, it pulls out all the timing so the car doesn't make any power. Oh. It makes it make boost, but no power. Hmm. And I get up to about 8, 10 pounds of boost, and then when I hit the nitrous button, it releases the line lock. And puts all the timing back so it's just automatic you don't have to think of doing a lot of things that way they're all within each mm-hmm. other's systems and everything yeah that's sweet and i would just change the jet if it if i want to launch harder or change the jet or wait till 12 pounds or whatever <laughs> that's still a lot to think about though in one pass where every drag pass i've made has been gas or whatever <laughs> shifting yeah. yeah i've never pressed a button on a drag strip <laughs> yeah well when you get a full-blown 900 horsepower Grand Prix. 
<laughs> it changes a lot of things. You have things. to push some buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not like the old days, though. You remember running Ken's car. We had to push lots of buttons. Jeez. Because we didn't have ECM access yet, so. Well, at least you guys didn't have to turn off traction control and then turn off ECS. Oh, we had to do all kinds of stuff. Oh, like Ken, digital Ken back in the day, he was an electrical whiz, so he, like, used his cruise control buttons for multiple things. Yeah, the volume buttons for the the radio and stuff, (laughs) and we could change it. I don't remember the process, but <laughs> and you'd have to go in with performance shift off, otherwise it would hit the rev limiter, and then you'd shift to second, or every time you wanted to shift, you'd have to hit the button, which made your TPS read 88% instead of 100, <laughs> even though you're still flooring it, so it would shift sooner, <laughs> and then when that would let off, and then you'd turn on the performance shift, and it's just all kinds of... And you just handed you like but we, a, we didn't know a way to get into the PCM, that. so... That was how we figured out how to get a pass out of the car. Just yeah. hardwired and tricked everything. And mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and Matt is the only one that has an attention span long enough to be able to do this. Because I'd be like, <laughs> oh, I just messed pushing up buttons. A few, we were trying to get that car in the 10s. And it's the last day at, at the track, last day of the year. It was getting late, and we'd gone 11-0 a bunch of times. And it was just one of those things. We got it all figured out. We just didn't have enough traction, so we put Zoom slicks on it, and they rubbed on the calipers. So we got out a grinder and a large power inverter and grinded on the the calipers, the brackets. Got up there, 10 minutes to go in the season, and it broke the cog belt on the launch. I drove back, man, we didn't make it. And Zoom's like, what are you doing? What? We got 10 minutes. It's like, (laughs) we got to take that whole face of that kid off of there so he's like, let's get to work so we three people wrenching on this thing oh my God. throw a cog belt on there drive up there they were like no we're, we're closed you know we're done and it's like no one minute <laughs> it's like oh, go ahead and ripped off a 1095 nice. there were no other cars there everybody Back, was what packed year? up and gone what year was that i don't know two maybe that insane. So one. sounds about there. right Loading up their trailers and you're just oh, everybody's gone. <laughs> Most of the people were gone, you know, an hour earlier. It was mm-hmm. literally like five people at the track. They must have hated you guys. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we were we were always there till the lights went off. All track guys hate ZZP <laughs> because well, not like, really. Got... <laughs> they they left the gate open for us one time. They're like, just close and lock the gate when you guys leave, <laughs> and they all left. Because all of us would show up, we would drive in, drop our cat backs, swap our wheels and tires. <laughs> Cable our rear suspensions, and if you any of you guys are big drag racers and you don't know about the cable mod, email Tim at ZZ Performance, <laughs> and I'll send you the cable mod. It's amazing. There's a good write up on. Yeah, if you just Google it, it'll come up with pictures. All right, that works. Google cable mod yep. 3800. It's an amazing <laughs> upgrade for you 3800 dudes. It's like it requires like a drill bit, like a I don't know, like a three eighths hole in like a specific spot of your car, and then like. It's like a 15-minute job at the track, and you'll probably drop two tenths. Everyone's yeah. laughing at Ish. the OG cable mod on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but anybody, if you don't know, like, now you know, and, like, <laughs> read, like read it. Yeah, that thing isn't going to squat when it's cabled. No. I don't drove. go too fast on the test drive back to your parking yeah. spot. Though. I drove a car home and forgot to take those off once from, from Stanton with the plastic race seat. Oh. <laughs> no cat back. <laughs> You remember Steve Mays broke his transmission and had to use the trailer? So I drove the race car home. Steve House's car again. Drove that home with the plastic seat. Oh, gosh. It started bouncing. I'm like, what the heck? Oh, yeah. It's got cables on it. Too late now. Passed a cop. Supercharged car with no no cat back on it. (laughs) Yeah, bouncing away. Skinnies on the back. Slicks on the front. Steve Mays, man. I man, I should check in on him and find out what's going on with him. They had a nice car. Super nice. nice. 40th anniversary car oh. running like 1190s on rockers, right? 1190s on quick. rockers, I think. I remember that. Oh. Yeah. No cam. I still am trying to wrap my head around the image of like 63800s rolling <laughs> into a track day. Six? <laughs> 3,800 guys roll deep, man. We're yeah. talking like 15. <laughs> like, there is no other group like a 3,800 group. 
Oh, there'd be six of us just heading from here to Milan. <laughs> just in a group. <laughs> just all cruising down the highway together. Yeah. You know what's funny is not much has changed. Like, you guys are out of it, but, like, when we go to the 3800 gathering this year in Detroit, like, literally from my town of Lake Odessa, there's probably six or eight. <laughs> Just, yeah, like my like my brother and my friends like will be six or eight deep on the way to Detroit. <laughs> Plus, whoever comes from here, <clears throat> we got another three 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 or four cars here. If you go, like it'll be deep. And yeah, we got pulled over one time on the way back from Dino Day, and I think Fowlerville. Maybe it's Detroit. Doesn't matter. We got pulled over. We weren't doing anything. We we're just on our way home. Just a bunch of racers. And cars, yeah. the officer said. Uh, well, you guys fit the description of the group of cars that was doing this and this and this. I'm like, sounds about right. About 200 of us just left from one place. <laughs> it's like, well, it wasn't us, but I believe you. <laughs> we let you go then? Yeah. We didn't do anything. <laughs> just pulled over every group of 30 hundreds on that strip. <laughs> well, it fit the description, you know. Mm-hmm. Bunch of Grand Prix going 120 mile an hour down the highway. <laughs> So how was, um, I know Matt touched on it a tiny bit, how was uh, trips to Mexico here when you guys had the early 3800s before people knew oh, how fast they could get here in Michigan and stuff? It was good times. Yeah? Just good times for on sure. On your way to work, just gapping yeah. people? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my turbo car, like, that thing was fast as hell. That was, what, um, 2002, maybe? I mean, there wasn't much back then you had to be worried about. three. If you had... 400 horsepower like oh yeah i'd easily pull on the camaros and corvettes yeah. and mustangs easily yeah. yep that's always been a thing about a 3800 is if it's built well it just like a 40 roll it just punches hard like it yeah. comes on hard like you're like you're at 100 you're done but that, that 40 to 100 is always so strong whether if it's a blower or a turbo car so steve hickman's car um uh, the white car with the blue bottom pretty infamous uh everybody knows steve hickman um, he was making like 360 wheel NIC cam, um, basically full bolt-ons. Uh, that car was the most fun from like a 40 roll. He would like punch it. It would blow the tires off with smoke rolling out of both wheel wells and lay you in the seat at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like that, it was a, that was a fun car to ride in. Mm-hmm. Very fun car. Yeah. One of my last races with the uh, red car I had. Um, a buddy of mine I graduated with bought a brand new Dodge Challenger RT, and he thought it was the fastest thing he had <laughs> since you know. Just bone stock. Yeah, we did a dig, and I dusted him once, and then we were heading back, and he pulled up, and I'm like, I did the typical, just go, because <laughs> it was like forty. <laughs> go ahead, I'll catch up. <laughs> and just reeled him in, and like you know, a gearser, and I'm like, and he we get back, he's like, man, that thing is so fast. I'm like, it's just, just works. Yeah. Like, a 360 in a Grand Prix is just, for some reason, a lot faster than a 360 in a Mustang, if that makes sense. Well, it's, yeah, it's a better power band. Yeah, it really is. JPL. Man, all seasons. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, you guys and your no-season tires. All seasons mean no season. They suck in the summer. They suck in the winter. Oh, man. JPL. <laughs> I just want 12. He's though. asking about the blower kit. Uh, no buy 1,000 with the optional 2,000. Yep. I should probably check in on the uh, Facebook. I'd be intimidated if I saw 16 plus 300s. I mean, nowadays, you... This still I... happens. <laughs> like he was saying, I mean, at the, at the gathering and the mm-hmm. Grand Prix days, like... Yeah, like our the ZZP thirty eight hundred Dino Day. Holy crap! How many cars yeah. do we have here? Uh, two hundred. Filled the 200. front lot. Filled the oh, side maybe lot. Maybe a hundred. I don't remember. Filled the Dino area. A lot. It was well over a hundred. Yeah. yeah, I want to say it was like two fifty or something. Does there that was sound a. Right? Yeah, it sounds about right. There were so many. I was on the Dino like pretty much the whole time, but I mean, I took a, a couple small breaks. Yeah, they were everywhere. <laughs> like, they roll deep, and they're the most loyal customers. Yeah. yeah. Like, a uh, couple guys, for, like, drive 12, 12 or more hours just for a dino day. You know, they got... Yeah. It's I awesome. think there was dudes longer than that, even. 
Oh yeah, it was something like cross country. Uh, a good a good friend of all the thirty eight hundred guys, Rich. He he flew in from California. Didn't even bring a car. He just flew in. <laughs> just, <laughs> uh, drove his rental in and said, "Hey, what's up, guys? Surprise everybody." Um, Rich, who just give him a shout out? Like, dang, Rich Nero. Nice. Appreciate it. That's yeah. awesome. He's been around a long time. Yeah, hopefully he comes to the one oh, this yeah. summer. He'll be here. Assuming everything um, happens with that. Um, like, and back on just the roll deep, I, I, I sold some parts to a couple buddies last last fall. And I think, I can't remember what they are picking up. Just some basic 3,800 parts. And four, four 3,800s pulled into my driveway. I didn't even know. They were like, yep. We're just, we're just, we knew we'd swing by and pick up some parts. We're heading over here and do this. And it was just like, they just picked up some used parts for me, but there was four guys all driving separate. <laughs> 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 and yep. I was like, heck yeah, man. I just, I had just gotten off work. I started up my Buick. We did some fucking 40 rolls, <laughs> went out to the ethanol plant, filled up. Like it was just a good time on a Tuesday night. <laughs> Like no other, no other platform will you'll get that with. Like Mustang guys just don't do that when they sell a set of headers. It <laughs> was great. It was like one of the best little meets I had all summer on a Tuesday. Didn't even expect it. Yeah, selling parts. Hmm. Matt, you got any good uh, street racing stories come to mind? Um, yeah, there was a couple times just cruising around uh, with Zoom and. You know, I'd be in my car or uh, in the Monte Carlo. It was my wife's car at the time. And I remember someone coming and cutting me off in a Trans Am to get up next to Zoom because his car looked all ricey. <laughs> and I'm like, what, what the heck, man? This guy just cuts me off. And so I see he wants to race Zoom. So I'm like, okay, I move over and get behind Zoom because <laughs> that's going to be the lane to be in. <laughs> And they kick down, and, and their Zoom's just pulling him, just walking him. And then I, I'm walking him, and I'm waving to him out the window. <laughs> the car behind, yeah. Yeah, and he's, what? <laughs> I'm losing to more cars than the one I'm racing. <laughs> we funny. had another one right at a stoplight. We got three wide. The guy, same thing. He hurries up to get up next to Zoom, and I, okay, I take the third lane. <laughs> and uh, we just, we were neck and neck, me and Zoom on the outside lanes, and he was you know, gone. <laughs> six buses back in about two gears. Had a few of them like that. Uh, yeah, you you don't really get that anymore. No, it's rare. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, anymore, no no new Mustang, even a five O, you know, wants to race a Grand Prix because he's either gonna lose and be extremely embarrassed, or he's just too cool. Well, even you're going off of how you kind of got into the thirty hundreds in high school. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I was in high school, we all raced our yeah. That's actually probably power Civic. Yeah, that's why I wanted a Grand Prix is because it was you could get it and it'd be the fastest car. I had a buddy who had a Mustang. Yeah, you were you were the shit. And in if high you, school park I knew if I got a Grand Prix, I'd be faster than this Mustang, <laughs> even if I didn't do anything to it. You know. <laughs> so. Yeah, like thirty eight hundred started ZZP because it was the easiest way for the forty something year old dude to sneak a mod car into the family. <laughs> Without the wife knowing. It still is. Like, there were so many dudes that would call me up back in the day like, and be like, all right, I need this and this mod. but, And I'd be like, what's your phone number? And they'd be like, yeah, don't call me. You know, it might be the wife. And I'm like, all right. So I had like special notes that I put on everybody's account. Like if you call, you know, make sure to start with this and ask for this and, you know, not lead on to anything. But yeah, it was an easy way for a 45-year-old dude that has a, a wife and a couple kids to sneak a mod car into the family. Mm-hmm. You know, let's say let's say it's a four-door Grand Prix GTP. It's front wheel drive. Auto. You and your wife drive can drive it. Your wife can drive it. You can drive it. It gets 30 miles a gallon. Um, you can fit two or three of your kids in the back. You can add a mod to it once a week. And the wife never notices. Mm-hmm. Like You can put you the, do, the big pulley on it when she's driving it. <laughs> you could. Or she just might not ever give it enough gas to know. Yeah. Like I, it was it was a great car back in the day. Like in in like Matt said earlier, like that car was way ahead of its time. The nice sloping, like nice dash 
the good looking gauge cluster. I mean, the build quality of the car was high. Mm-hmm. It I was a very that. nice car. Was well, it the tire pressure thing they had on the dash or something? The DIC, yeah. I thought yeah, that, was that was the was... coolest thing in high yeah. school. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just like yeah. Pontiac's uh, saying, driving excitement. And it was. Yeah. Heck yeah. Still is. Like, that, like, perfect. The wide track. Yeah. Wide track. They marketed you know? it very well. <laughs> they sure did. Is that what they called it? Wide track? Yeah. Holy crap. You're. Oh my I've gosh, never heard that. I just dated myself. <laughs> Trevor doesn't know about the wide track. Uh-uh. <laughs> that was how they marketed that car. Wider, I don't even know how it can Wider is better, was their slogan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, and it wasn't even much wider. And it, and it didn't handle <laughs> much better. But it definitely was a, a common choice for bigger dudes, too. Yes. It, it fit bigger people in it than most cars. Yeah, have you seen Terrell Smith? He's a big guy. Yeah. yeah. And he he six, has a couple he has a couple Grand Prix. He's you know, six twenty, I think. Six twenty. <laughs> <Something like that. laughs> oh. But yeah. yeah, I mean you you can comfortably drive that car, you can comfortably you can you can take uh, and hand the keys to your wife of your eleven second daily driver and she'll drive it and potentially not even know it runs 11s or complain about it yeah especially if you kept it quiet but you're not going to do that with our new equal length exhaust i mean you could it could be quiet <laughs> but why keep it quiet when it sounds like a it freaking sounds supra so good yeah it is it has the same amount of cylinders as a supra yeah different configuration but we'll let that slide <laughs> well when you line them up just right don't really matter what configuration they're in that's what that guy says yes <laughs> Cool. Man, well, the HV3 is brought up again. Yeah, We're they, working they, on it, man. There are a lot of guys. We'll have to get on cooling about that. Yeah, Tim Cooling is uh, is the R&D, you know, design guy for the HV3. Mm-hmm. It is a um, it is a necessary product for sure. Oh, yeah. Especially for the naturally aspirated guys who are trying to get the best bang for their buck without putting boost to it. Yeah. Which isn't always a bad thing. Can we call it the 4? Like Probably. That. That's Ooh. a great idea. HV4. Most likely. Yeah, the HV1 was plagued with install issues. That was actually a plate that bolted in between the mm-hmm. upper and lower intake manifold, and nobody could install that thing without it leaking. Yeah. And then the HV, um, the HV2, and then um, I don't remember what the HV1 was. And then the HV3 was completely inside. But then that was a really tight fit, and it didn't work on 100% of all the upper intake manifolds. But um, I would imagine the HV4, you know, let's probably call it, uh, will fit inside the intake similar to the others. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll be poured or if it'll be milled, you know, CNC'd. I'm thinking it's going to be milled, CNC'd, from what I I heard from Colin. That's cool. Um, Either way, I'm sure we'll test it to... Yeah, I guess while we're talking about intake stuff, I did want to mention that I've seen a couple people not realize our new 2.5 intercooler system for Gen 3 and Gen 5 blower, you do not need to modify your lower intake manifold anymore. Because I've I've seen a couple people cutting it out and running our 2.5, and it literally goes right on your... You don't even got to take the intake manifold off anymore. Yep, that was another one of those products, like I mentioned earlier, about how the shop across the street was making it for us and now that is a hundred percent in-house yeah and you know obviously obviously every time we design a you know we redesign a product it's better than the last so now yeah you can bolt it in with no modifications Mm -hmm. alex says can i get the banner i assume he's talking about this one we didn't even mention we stepped up our game thanks to eric he uh made our podcast look all nice we we aren't selling those though but if enough people want them let us know we could yeah, email customer service at easyperformance.com. We need to get a new one up front, too. JP. Tax returns and planning your mod list Ooh. with that. So It is that time. I know a couple of our employees received their tax returns, and I've also seen a pretty high increase in sales lately. So, so that means that uh, Matt and I have a bunch of remote tunes to do. <laughs> So be ready for that every day. <laughs> Didn't really get a break this year. Nope. Nope. <laughs> no. No rest for the wicked. <laughs> Gotta no. go fast. Remote tunes. But uh, I do want to say remote tunes is busy as it keeps 
Al, Matt, and myself um, really are the best way. Um, a 1.0 tune is great. It's great for a basic bolt-on car, but um, no mail-order tune is ever as good as a remote tune. So, like, a 1.0 tune would be great. Buy it, install it, run it, and then do, like, pick up HP tuners, borrow a friend's HP tuners, and do maybe a PCM update or something. Yep. Send your your file into scan to Matt, Al, or myself, depending on what platform it is. Obviously, when you buy the PCM update, it'll forward it to the right person. And your car will perform better. Yeah. No matter what. I mean, I've been trying to dial our 1.0 in for, for the 3800 for years and years. Al for the eco you know the the LSJ and Matt for the LNS. Speak of the devil. Um, we we continue to dial the files in better and better, but it's never as good as like a remote tune based on your scan, your octane, your mod list. Yeah, Al, that's do you want to give your uh, quick two cents on how much you love thirty eight hundred? Stick, stick your big head in here. So Rear drives. If you sit if you sit next to Tim, they'll they'll hear just fine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I do have a large <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm the remote one. That's what actually. What about 3800s? How, how bad do you want a Firebird? Uh, oh, hold on. <laughs> I saw you shit, and that was unfairly portrayed. It was like, I would accept a 3800 if it was in a trans hand. I didn't say I wanted a 3800. <laughs> Just if it comes with it. Be honest. Like, be honest. Like,. How about this? How about this? What if a friend had a 3800 Firebird and they were like, you can drive it whenever you want? There you go. No. The key is, once we, all of a sudden, after 20 years, even though we already knew how, finally made them sound decent, it's just like a, a, one, one of the tiny little toggle switches in my brain clicked. And it's like, maybe this could be a viable swap engine. Yeah. Well, the, the so first part of that is true. We figured that out, so your prayers are answered. And I would still like, uh, you know. You were going to turbo it anyway. Well, yeah, that's true. It's still going to sound the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's like, mine sounds awesome. What are you guys talking <laughs> about? The other, the other week when we were talking about it on the podcast, there was people that were saying like, oh, no, that's impossible. And no. Like, there was some thread on one of the Facebook groups where they like mathed out the angle of each combustion event. Like, it's impossible like, does everyone think every video of Matt's car is fake? Like, we, just, we, really, we just dub in a Supra. We're just dubbing a Supra. Yeah. Every single video, every time we get the car out. That yeah, you know, amazing. Matt has the best sounding 3800. I mean, obviously it makes more power than our, you know, pretty much every 3800. But. Really? Yeah. Except for that one in Australia. <laughs> Maybe. But. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, stateside, well, stateside is probably makes more one. power. Just doesn't put just it all the way to the tires. tires. That's what I was say. Which this is very well. Could there you go. Power the crank. That one's probably fake too. Though. Hmm? That one's probably fake too, though. So. Probably. Yeah. That one sounds bad, though. <laughs> your your minds are all going to be blown. Your minds are all going to be blown, and you're going to be able to buy the part from us that can make your car sound like it. And everybody's going to say we're full of crap and that it's impossible. And then they're gonna buy the part, and then they're gonna be like, "Holy crap!" We all and then, thought it was impossible too. That's why it took this long. And then everybody that sold their thirty eight hundred is gonna buy another one. <laughs> 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 and then just for this mod, this exhaust is legit chap security for us all. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> What's cool is you can is it's also possible to run on a factory manifold. You don't even have to do any exhaust modifications. The coolest thing manifold. is if you put it in your kit car, Fiero Base 3800, uh -huh. it'll actually sound like it's supposed to. Yes. And there was a guy earlier that mentioned 3800 Fiero. Yes, this can work in that as well. Mm -hmm. It'll work in anything. It'll except sound a like a Ferrari or Gee, other exotic, whatever shit. you're going for. Next week we'll have a oh, sound hey, clip out for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I would 100% rock a Fiero 3800. That's like my one weak spot for the 3800. Yeah, that's why I came up here. But then I got like, here. seriously, this customer that had his car here that's tuned for E85 put gas in his car and then brought it here? Yeah. 
little behind the scenes for you guys. <laughs> it happens. Oh, yeah, we've seen it all on remote tunes. Hey, man, I don't know what's going on, but your fuel trims are way off. Are you sure this is 93? No, no. I threw 85 in it just to see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gee, thanks. You just to see. should have told me that. Just to see what happened, though. Yeah. You know? No well, what deal. happened is it didn't run very well, and <laughs> now I have to change your tune. It's every yeah, day. Hey, um, hey, customers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. If your car is not flex fuel, please ask. Please ask us: Is my car flex fuel? And if it is not flex fuel, don't put gas in it if you're tuned for E85, or vice versa. If it's, mm. or if you have a turbo or supercharged car, just run 93. Yeah, it actually no says it in the gas you. cap door. Premium only. <laughs> Premium is 93. Or 91, depending on. My car one. doesn't. My car doesn't run good. That's what they do, and then and then we have to like just figure it out. But why are your fuel trims 30 percent off? I don't know. And then you, like, I don't know, go through the testing, the ZZP testing to figure out what it is. Why does it smell like this, but it's tuned like this, or something along those lines? Oh, well, the last time my girlfriend, my wife, or just flat out me in this situation, did something else to it. How are we supposed to figure this out, people? Okay, so I'm going to go finish up that project. Terrell says... Tim was the reason I found out my fuel system was sugared. Was sugared? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that situation. I don't know. What did you do? What did you do? <laughs> Somebody was mad because you made so much power. <laughs> Won a race and someone followed him home and poured something in the gas something. tank. Something. Yeah, he's got, a, he's got an all-new uh, plastic gas tank now in it now. Well, there's some weight savings. Yeah. And some added capacity. We sell the um, gas caps, the E85 ones, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So if you switch to E85, just get one of those. Mm-hmm. And nobody will ever mess it up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I used to have to steal those from the junkyard. Now you can just buy them from ZZP. You purchase them from the junkyards, of course. I mean, they're... just Just like a... That's one of the entrance fee things, right? <laughs> <laughs> or just... Or just at a random Walmart, you know, just... I was just there uh, <laughs> last week. Was it last week? Or this week. It was early this week. And there's still, like, four rows of Grand Prix. In mm-hmm. there. It's mm-hmm. crazy. Those yeah. cars just don't you, you You can basically build a full bolt-on 3800 by just stopping by your local junkyard these days because... <laughs> Last time I was down there, there was power logs, down pipe, and a Borla cat back with a 3-4 pulley and a tune. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Wish I needed any of those. It is no, I'm not telling you where it was. And look at all the PCMs and see all the ZZP stickers. <laughs> yeah, that's what's, that's what's funny is me and uh, the receiving guy were laughing on. We got two core, core returns this week that were 1.0 PCMs. So much, yeah. That happens so often. So often. It's crazy. Uh, Steve Lowe, I see your question. Um, feel free to email me. I'll definitely help you out. Yeah, email uh, customer service, ZZP. Just mention Tim. We'll shoot it to you. Yep. Got any more on uh, Facebook, Bo? Uh-uh. That's about it? Yeah. Well, if you guys don't have anything to add, we're uh, pretty much good to wrap up here. Yeah, keep on keeping on with your 3800. Oh, yeah. Everyone we'll let keep us on, know what you're doing. As well. Let us know what you want to hear next week. Uh, thanks everyone for coming on. Yeah, I think that's about it. So, ooh. thanks for hanging out. Ooh, ooh, Silkmaster acts. He's responding like he might have heard the video. Like maybe he heard... the second time it was played. Nice. It, it okay. Work the time. <laughs> nice. Great. We'll get some better exhaust stuff for sure. Yeah. Wide open throttle cruising. Pay yeah. attention Red. to social media. It'll be real soon. Yeah, but, we 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 made a video and then we. Came the, back and find out the mic was yeah, terrible. Yeah. So we're trying. We'll we'll do it again. We can we we'll can we can build video. it. We just sometimes can't record it. <laughs> we had yeah. a GoPro issue that was uh, <laughs> yeah we're gonna blame not the GoPro. favorable. <laughs> yeah, right on. Any last words, Matt? Nope. Are we gonna we'll see set. the black car out this year? Of course. 
<laughs> black car. Hopefully, do Metro Cruise again. Yeah, yeah. like six black cars. But I know when you. <laughs> ah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, literally all of them, but one. Are they black. they <laughs> do call him Batman for a reason. Uh, do you do you have a a strong preference of black? I guess I never even put that together. Your truck's your truck's not black. No, the truck was a really good deal. Yeah. I remember the first day you got the truck. I, I was like, how do you like it? And you're like, it's not black. <laughs> I had six black trucks in a row. Wow. Now a red one. I couldn't pass it up. Three, yeah, it's, 325 a month for it's a super an nice 18. Truck. The color's sweet, too. Yeah. I like it. It's a nice but, truck. Yeah, whenever you want to sell it, it'll match my Regal. <laughs> Look good towing it. <laughs> oh, cool. Cool, well, guys. Thanks, anyways. Uh, see you guys next week, 4 o'clock every week just plan on it so that's about it thanks guys sounds good see you guys have a good weekend